What's the funniest thing you've done to avoid doing it? Here's mine. I'm a guy. I had just graduated college and moved to a new town. A girl I knew offered to show me around for the night. We go to a house party with her friends and drink until 2 a.m. At that point, she asks me if I want to crash on her couch. The thing is, I'm actually really far from home. I have no car. I'm drunk. Public transportation will take hours. So, I agree sure, I'll crash on your couch. Now, she was not at all unattractive, far from it. The thing is, I had spent quite a bit of time with her in college, and there had never been any spark. We had been in a touring performance group together. We had rehearsed for hundreds of hours, gone on road trips, shared hotel rooms, etc. She fought constantly with other members of the group. She hooked up with a couple of the guys, all older than me. I didn't judge her for that, but I knew enough to know that I didn't want to get involved. Anyway, we get into her apartment. She says, oh F it, I don't feel like making up the couch, you can just sleep on my bed. It's no big deal, she says, it will be just like we're on tour. Hey, we piled four people into a bed on tour, didn't we? That's true, I think. We did do that. Sure, so we get into bed. I'm lying on my back, she on hers. We stay that way silently for several minutes. I can tell she's wide awake. And then, suddenly, I feel her hand on my leg. It starts stroking my thigh. Her nails dig in. She goes farther and further up my leg, rubbing back and forth. OFFF. I really don't want to do this. But I certainly don't want to explain that either. So, I think fast. And let out a loud, rasping, rattling snore. Her hand pauses. Snore. Her hand moves away. I rev up the chainsaw for about five minutes. Eventually, she rolls over on her side and goes to sleep. Bullet dodged. She kept her pride while I kept my dainty manhood intact. A couple once tried to have a three sons with me. They kept trying to touch me and massage me, and my awkward, idiotic attempt at diffusing the situation was to complain incessantly about how hungry I was and could we please go find some fried chicken. Finally, I had to explicitly tell them I wasn't interested. They were really nice about it, so nice that they believed me about being starving and loaded me down with all this fresh produce. I had to walk home at midnight carrying two huge armfuls of cabbage and pears and stuff. All my housemates were up when I got back and wanted to know where I had found a farmer's market so late at night. Back in college, I was a designated driver for a group of friends. We get to a party and my sober ass is bored. Then a very, very drunk woman I knew from one of my classes started hitting on me, culminating with her telling me she'd do my brains out. Sober me thought this wasn't kosher since she was hammered so I turned around for a moment and yanked a few hairs out of my nose. It made me eyes water and my nose run and I said I have a brutal cold you don't want to catch. Why don't you let me get better and then I'll take you out. I gave her my phone number and she thought that was so sweet she passed out with her head in my lap. Three days later before class she came up to me, gave me a huge hug and thanked me for not being AD. We ended up dating and she's still one of my best friends. Went with this girl to some seedy love hotel, I'm Brazilian. She wants me to go down on her. Well, why not? Thing is, there's a strange smell coming from down there. And it's far from that normal, girly, and pleasing smell. No, it's not menstruation, it's not poop, it isn't anything caused by lack of hygiene either. It's not even an yeast infection, I know these smells, trust me. It's something akin to carrion, like there's some necrotic tissue inside her parts. When I took her panties off, I almost gagged. So I did what any manly man would do. I immediately excused myself to the bathroom and escaped through the window. Late to the show and tell, but why not? This is a story of wingmanship more than turning down the deed. Went to a bar with two buddies, one of whom was meeting a girl there he had a crush on. She was wasted when we arrived, and after introductions it became apparent she was interested in me, heavy flirting, obvious touching, etc. 
My friend with the crush took it in stride, sort of giving me a say la vie shrug, but I felt bad. I moved the conversation around till it was ripe to drop a white lie. I was gay. She didn't believe me at first, so I improvised and wrapped my arm around my other friend, who was in the middle of WTFing after hearing me say that, and introduced him as my partner. She did a hipcock and asked us to prove it. There are those moments when you catch the gaze of a friend and realize that what's about to go down is something that you'll laugh about later or regale at each other's wedding. It only lasts for a split second, but in those moments you can glimpse the depth of your friendship. We shared a moment like that before exchanging a slow, gentle, familiar kiss. She just stood there, then said, wow, you guys don't seem gay. Meanwhile, my pal who was into her witness the whole thing, jaw dropped and bought us two shots. She became more obnoxious as the night wore on, and my pal lost all interest. Came out of there with a great story though. I just say that I have diarrhea. Nobody wants to do the deed with someone who has diarrhea. This on behalf of my non-redditor roommate. A girl in his dorm forced him to walk her home, and then alleged not to have a key to her room. She then pulled him into his bed and tried to get things going in a hurry. He got up, claiming he had to go to the bathroom, grabbed a hoodie, and walked 20 minutes to the library where he slept for the rest of the night on the ground because the room with the lounge chairs was closed. He got dozens of calls and texts from her, but never heard from her again after that night. While wingmaning a friend who was doing it in another room of the house, I had to sleep in the same bed as the girl he was doing it with's ugly friend. So she really wants to do the dirty, but I'm not feeling it with her at all. So very drunk, I decide to make a fort on my half of the bed out of blankets and pillows and such and try to go to sleep. However, she is surprisingly aggressive, so for an hour I have to keep yelling at her and no girls allowed in my fort. She eventually got the message. The deed with my ex-girlfriend was so terrible, she'd lay there like a dead fish, basically, that when we would go out to bars, I'd purposely give myself whiskey D. I fell behind a dryer. I was drunk, sitting up on top of a dryer in a friend's laundry room. The creepy girl I had avoided all evening entered and had me cornered in the room. She pushes up on me, tries unbuckling my belt, and attempts to kiss me. My only method of evasion was to fall backwards behind the dryer and wait until backup arrived. Three friends heard her calling for help and sprung me from being trapped between the wall and the dryer. I left the room with them as my guardians. I'll never forget the terror of being wedged back there while watching her fat hot dog fingers try to molest me from above. I've told this on Reddit before, but I still think it's one of my crowning achievements in life. It was 2005 or 2006, with some friends at a girl's place. She has a thing for me, but I strongly suspect that she isn't completely mentally stable. We're all on her bed watching Family Guy together. Girl decides she wants me. Rolls on top of me, pins her arms. Friends are like, ah, we're gonna leave and start to head out. I give them the don't leave me eyes. I think fast. Wrestling instincts take over. Flip her over, I'm on top of her with her arms pinned now. She has the oh yes look in her eyes. I hop up and whoop 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 whoop, swabber crab walk away. She did turn out to be crazy as if avoided sticking my D in crazy. I was really high watching The Lion King and this very unattractive girl kept edging closer to me on the couch. I eventually wound up curled up in the fetal position away from her tucked into the very corner of the sofa. Late to the party, but here we go. Not something I did, but my brother. For a few weeks in high school, I lived with my mom and I was babysitting my younger brothers. A girl with who I went to school decided to stop by and was clumsily trying to seduce me. She had a bit of a reputation, and I was watching kids besides, so I really wasn't into it. Anyway, she got really forceful, and my younger brother picked up on the fact that I was uncomfortable. As an aside, I was supposed to be very careful about letting the boys play wrestling video games as they tended to get a little rowdy. I had completely ignored this rule all day. Anyway, my brother saw how uncomfortable I was, so he decided that he was going to climb on the back of the couch and dropkick the F right out of her. I pretended to be upset with him until she got back up and left, 
then high-fived him and took my brothers out for ice cream. I was 15, at the beach for a week and a girl, 16, I met earlier that week told me she wanted to hang out on the beach that night. When I went to meet her, she had a blanket laid out and started kissing me and said she wanted her first time to be on the beach. She was like a 5 or 6 as far as attractiveness goes and I didn't want my first time to be with her. I told her I didn't have a condom and my D was all sandy and it would hurt her. I do not regret turning her down. When I was a resident assistant in college, one of my residents had a crush on me that wasn't reciprocated. Her roommate invited me over one night to watch a movie with the two of them, then the roommate left the room. There we were, sitting on the floor, watching some stupid chick flick, when she moved over to sit even closer to me. She grabbed a blanket and threw it over our laps, moving even closer. I knew things were going to be going the way of the smooching and horizontal mambo shortly if things went as she planned, but I was not attracted to her and wanted to foil the plan as best I could. At one of my house parties a few years back, one of my friends brought over a female friend to drink. This girl had dumpster written across her forehead. In my college days, I had dumpers tattooed on my neck. Ten minutes into the party, it was evident that she wanted to take part in the no pants dance. I was 50-50 about it. After the party, a fifth of vodka and a case of beer, my roommate and I went back to our room with this girl and one he had picked up through the night. They ended up passing out, so I had no feasible way out at this point if something went wrong. Not only did she skip the whole let's make out for two hours stage, she grabbed a handful of my hair and just started trying to force me to go down on her. At this point, I'm down to a 30-70 and wanting to take part in this. By the time I got to her belly button, the scent of low tide rolled into my nose. So I did the natural thing any 21-year-old guy would do. I crawled back up to her and started speaking seductively in my Kermit the Frog voice until she left my bed. My ex and I were at a mutual friend's house party. Backstory, we were together for three years and the last three months hadn't done it at all. Eventually, she asked if she could talk to me in private. We go in the den and she tells me how happy she is that I'm happy and that we can still be friends. Blah, blah, blah. Then she makes her classic move. She touches my arm and then moves her hand up to touch my neck and lightly scratch. She leans in for the kiss and I let it happen. Next thing I know, she has managed to fall back on the couch with me on top. We move to where I am straddling her to clarify. I'm a girl, too. She is extremely corny and ready for action when I lean back and say you want to F me as I put her hands on my chest. Yes, well you didn't when we were together so no thanks. I get off her and walk out. Now I know it isn't very nice but it was a bad relationship and I needed to get some of my pride back. Well, this is a funny story that happened to me a few years ago. I was with some friends in a house for the summer. The house wasn't very big and we slept three in each room, we were nine total. For the sake of friendship, we all agreed that we wouldn't be fooling around with each other. All was going fine, we were having a really good time together. About two weeks and things started to change, one of the two girls that I shared a room with let's call her Sarah started to do some strange things like leaving her underwear in my bed, walking around a lot on her underwear, etc. I never said anything because our other friend was in the room and she didn't say anything so my though was it's nothing out of the ordinary, just ignore it. This kept going for a month and a half. We had just one more week to the end of the summer and then it got worse, she climbed on my bed, naked. I really didn't like her that way and I didn't want to go there with her so I panicked. I got up and said sorry Sarah, I'm in love with Rita, our other roommate. I ran to Rita, waked her up and kissed her. The poor thing was really shocked, but I explained everything to her. We had to fake do it for the rest of the week. In a college apartment, I noticed a drunk friend go into my bedroom and close the door. I hid in there a minute later when she doesn't come back out right away. As I walk in the room, I see she's topless and sitting on my floor trying to play my guitar. She was cute, but way too drunk for my liking at the moment, so I decided nothing was going to happen. So in order to stall the inevitable, I ask her if she wanted me to play her a song she says yes, and I walk over to take the guitar from her. 
As I grabbed it, I turned around to make sure the door was closed, to save us both the embarrassment, and I accidentally slammed the guitar into her face, giving her a bloody nose. She ran out of the room crying and topless, and I didn't see her again for three weeks. We pretend it didn't happen. When in doubt, I like to do what I like to call the possum. Note that I have a history of suddenly fainting and seizing, and most of my friends know about it so if it happens they can try and catch me so I don't hit my head or something. Once upon a time, 16 year old me sneaked out and went to a friend's house for various illicit activities. While I was there, a guy who I only sort of knew kept getting handsier as the night wore on. At first, drunk me though oh, he's pretty cute. I can roll with this. Later, we ended up making out and whatnot on my friend's bed. As things got hotter, I decided to send my hands on an exploratory mission down south. There really wasn't anything there. His D was so small, and he just couldn't keep it up. Before now, I'd always thought it was a myth. At the same time, we both realized the implications of my discovery, and he started being very violent, aggressive, and threatening me if I told anyone about his tiny D. I decided it was time to nope out of there, except I couldn't figure out how without making it awkward or pissing the dude off. So, I did the first thing that popped into my head. I played dead. I went limp, closed my eyes, acted like I was having a seizure, and then slid off the bed onto the floor and laid there. He freaked out, put his D away, and then I assume went home. I got up, got a snack, and then dropped some acid. I need to return my videotapes. Did you take her him to Dorsha first? I've never done anything to avoid doing it. It just keeps not happening all on its own. Sounds like you've done a lot of things to avoid it, just none of them on purpose. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and have an amazing day.